Jumbo, Jumbo. I got it right today. Um, I start with a, a, <laughs> a local greeting. Um, I was struggling yesterday. I'm actually still struggling with some of the 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 um, language. Um, well, Kenya is a former British colony, just like South Africa. So English is everywhere. But the interesting thing is, when I got off at the airport, was how all the signs were written in English and Kiswahili. Um, it wasn't just English signs, and like in um, in South Africa, where everything is in English, and it's only here and there where you actually have a local language on a signboard. So that was uh, the fascinating thing. Um, and even though um, Kiswahili is the majority language, um, the common language, um, there are many dialects here, and there are many other languages similar to um, to South Africa as well. So there's lots of similarities and lots of um, things that I've picked up as, well, I've only been here for a day and a half, but it's been interesting seeing how everything is. And people are very friendly, um, very, very curious. We started off this morning with an alarm <laughs> that <laughs> drove me through the roof. My alarm went off at um, 5.30 a.m. and I'm still on South African time, so that would have been 4.30 a.m. back home. And we left the hotel at um, 6 a.m. That would have been 5 a.m. back home. So um, my body is is not amused with me right now. But the reason we left so early was whenever you go to a fresh produce market, um, the very freshest greens, the very freshest ingredients are always the first thing in the morning. So you want to get there before everyone else does because the, the best ingredients are picked off first. And um, greens and veggies start to wilt as soon as they they are left out in the open, and that's what happens at a market. Everything is out in the open. So if you want fresh ingredients, you always go early. Uh, I forget the name of the market we went to, um, but I'm going to find out, and it's probably written somewhere on the screen now, somewhere here, um, which market we went to. And we we walked around first, and you could tell we were we were <laughs> we were tourists and foreigners. Because, uh, well, besides having my huge camera in my hand, um, we didn't know where we were walking. We would literally were just going with the wind. And the market is huge. It is, it is quite large. Um, but we don't mind um, exploring. And it's what chefs do anyway. We like looking for the best ingredients. So I didn't mind um, doing all the walking. And eventually we got to a corner at the very end of the market. And 
one of the guys came up to us and was like, ah, okay, um, who are you? And we told him who we were, we told him what we were there to do and what our story was. Um, his name was David. <laughs> Luggage come coming in the night, so they cannot sleep in the house. So they have to sleep uh, waiting for their luggage or for, oh, the, for, for their okay. vegetables. Yeah. So, so the they, they, they are here. I mean, seven shillings is about one rand. That is the going rate right now. And um, so I withdrew two thousand rand at the ATM or two thousand shillings at the ATM. And you think, oh, you're drawing a lot of money. Then you do the math, like ah, this is only like two hundred and fifty bucks. Um, and yeah, to to see a whole lot of zeros on your ATM slip <laughs> gives you a heart attack first until you, you do the conversion and then you're like, oh. Yeah. 30. 30 can change, yes. Very cute. Yes. 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 So in rands, that is uh, four rand, no. four something. Four, four point two. This one cost eight hundred shillings. So if you convert it to South African rands, eight hundred shillings would be about one hundred twenty rand, more or less. In South Africa, if you were to buy this cloth, it would be in the five hundred rand range. Yeah. So you can do the math, and. Anyway, let me leave that one alone. Um, and when you travel, I always tell people, do not do sums in your head. But you can't help it. Um, money is a commodity that we all, we all um, look for and we all try to understand. As my phone keeps going off, I'm connected to the Wi-Fi in the hotel, very fast Wi-Fi, unlike back home in South Africa where things are always slower. And the internet here is cheap. Um, everyone uses M-Pesa here. Um, when we were trying to pay, people kept on saying M-Pesa, M-Pesa. Uh, I never caught on in South Africa the M-Pesa phenomenon. But here in Kenya, it's everywhere. Everyone uses M-Pesa. Um, carrying notes and carrying money is, is actually is not as common as, um, as using M-Pesa. So that's the other um, fascinating thing. Uh, my phone keep buzzing, keeps buzzing off. Um, heading off to another market after this. I'm going to try squeezing getting in a tattoo today, as my phone keeps buzzing. I'm going to try squeezing a tattoo. We're going to a meat market as well today. I'm also going to go to the Maasai market too. I just want to see it. Um, I've been told not to, to spend too much because they've overpriced everything. Um, it's very touristy now. I just want to go take photos and you're probably going to see them coming up, all the video clips of it all. I'm not going to spend too much on the touristy stuff. Do you drive funny? Uh, no, we drive, you guys drive funny. <laughs> <laughs> the only people drive funny in South Africa are the taxi drivers. Yeah, I know they drive. <laughs> oh. Okay, we are on the way to the museum. That's what it is. That is for me. That is the one I'm going to post. Thank you, Wendy. And this is our our driver. They drive crazy in Kenya, but there's no accidents. That's the fascinating thing. Everyone just goes and they turn into the circle. I like this drawing. Yeah, we walk to the museum to see the, the venue. And what's happened later? We're here at the National Museum checking out the venue. That's one delay and Mpumi organizing 
This is where we are going to be having our dinner. So we just, yeah, everything is makeshift. We're bringing in the entire setup, the whole kitchen structure, the whole food, literally everything. It's an open space with nothing in there. Literally only the second day. <laughs> yeah, it's been long. Um, as I said earlier, we woke up at uh, five o'clock, and after we got back from um, seeing the venue, um, the the museum, I went to go look for 
for other ingredients as well. And then I went to the Maasai market um, and got a few more Maasai um, products actually. Uh, I'll show those to you another day. I'm too lazy to get up from this chair and go fetch them right across the, <laughs> across the room there. Yeah, the laziness I think is a byproduct of the amount of walking I've done today. Yo, I don't think I've walked this much in a foreign city. I mean, I do it all the time in Joburg. I, I walk a lot, but then I know where the destination is. Whereas when you're in a foreign city, um, you don't know where the destination is. You're just walking until whoever directed you says you're going to get to wherever you're going. Um, but I had my friend Mo, um, Maureen, with me, and she's a Nairobi born and bred um, citizen. Um, and I studied with Maureen at the same chef school, um, Pruly, 10 years ago. That's how long I have known her. It doesn't seem that long. Lovely, lovely person, um, chef as well, but she doesn't practice. Oh, that's doctors, that's a medical. You don't practice being a chef, do you? Anyway, she, she's not in the industry as much anymore. Um, that's what tends to happen. Um, once you qualify as a chef, it's either for you or it's not. And you find out very, very quickly um, whether the industry is for you or not. And she found out quickly and decided to use her qualification for other things. Um, still has a catering company, but not really in... Actually, I'm talking a lot about Maureen. Let's leave that alone. Uh, so, as I was walking home from, <laughs> from, from dinner, we had dinner at one of the, the cafes. Um, here and I had ugali and there was a chicken um, I'll say it's a stew because it wasn't a curry and there were some traditional veggies as well on the plate and I'm trying to sample as much Kenyan food as possible I tried to take a photo but it looked kind of odd me whipping up my camera in the middle of, of eating and uh, yeah and that's another thing I've been trying to avoid looking like a tourist but then people speak to you in Kiswahili and immediately they pick up ah this one this one is not from here and a few people actually picked up the South African accent I, I've always thought we South Africans have rather different accents I mean within our own country there are so many different variants of the accent and this um, man picked up immediately that it was a South African accent and you are now very warm, very welcoming. Um, this is the clip of me um, speaking to him. How do you know it's from South Africa? And the, the tongue, the accent. Yeah. We speak funny. No. It's African. I'm probably African. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm And also, as I was walking back from um, dinner with Maureen, uh, I was walking back alone very quickly. Uh, I've also been told not to walk around holding my camera like I do. So, <laughs> all the, the clips of me, <laughs> and the, the clips of um, of the city and all the markets and all the things you guys are watching is me actually being stupid by holding my rather expensive camera wherever I go. Um, but I'm a big guy and, but yeah, let me not jinx it. Um, so far, so good though. Um, I had to put my camera away. But as I was walking back from dinner, these two ladies um, greeted me. And I um, was like, no, it's just Kenyans being friendly. Like, hi. And I was like, hello, ladies. And I carried on walking. And they were like, why are you walking? Aren't you going to stop and say hi? And I'm like, okay, uh, I'm in a rush. I need to get to my hotel. And uh, they're like, okay, it's fine. What hotel room are you in? <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, um, basically I was uh, offered favors of the night. Let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> I even uh, said to them, um, you don't even know who I am, where I'm from. Um, why do you want my hotel room? And they immediately said, no, you are South African. You are from South Africa. And so it... There goes my plan of being anonymous and trying to blend into the local crowd. 
uh, clearly I failed at that. Um, <laughs> tomorrow we'll attempt again. Um, tomorrow we're hitting the road. Uh, we're going to the market again to purchase stuff now properly. Um, getting all our ingredients for um, Monday's gala dinner. We're also going to the chef school. We're going to start prepping some of the food, um, getting it out. And um, my main course involves chocolate which needs to be slow cooked. Um, so that's what we, we're going to get going tomorrow on. And basically getting all the small old details that we need um, for the garlic dinner. And I'll be recording it all so you'll see it all in the background. It is now just past 8 p.m. local time. I was watching the rugby. That's another funny thing. Um, all the channels here have our South African sport. Um, the rugby, the cricket, the the football, the that PSL is also televised here. I thought me being out of South Africa would mean I could avoid being a Kaiser Chief supporter, but yeah, it's following me. And uh, I had it on in the background. I switched the TV off. I'm sure you can see there. It was just messing up out of the camera, but yeah, I've been watching sport in the background and trying to to relax as much as possible because the next two days are going to be literal chaos um but that's how it is uh in our business and in the industry um it is chaotic at best and you get addicted to it and we will be working with um chef students and um kenyan chefs which is what i'm looking forward to and we're also going to be teaching them about our cuisine but yeah i hope you you're enjoying my diary sessions because it's quite a mission putting them together. <laughs> I didn't realize how much work this thing is. But um, I would want to watch something like this on YouTube. And that is why I'm doing it. Uh, just so we have different content on, on, on South African and African cuisine out there. Not your typical, I'm um, standing behind a counter and putting food down. Um, I will be doing some of that as well. But 